Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX. In today's video, we are going to be talking about six more health benefits to quercetin. One thing I want to look at the first study here is about pain and inflammation. And so in this study, what they looked at, athletes that were actually riding a bike essentially, and they had them take, there was two groups, they had the athletes take 1,000 milligrams of quercetin for six weeks and looked at their C-reactive protein levels before the treatment and after and really didn't find any difference. So that made me dig deeper into the research and what I found here, I'll again show this on the screen, was a meta-analysis which is basically looking, what they did was look at seven randomized controlled trials, RTCs, and that did show a significant reduction in C-reactive protein. I should back up a moment here. C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker that we typically like to look at to see the level of inflammation that that particular patient may be in or enduring. And so with this meta-analysis that was completed, again, it looked at seven random controlled trials, the end result was that the patients that benefited the most from the quercetin were those that were taking more than 500 milligrams a day and actually those that had a lower C-reactive protein level, less than three. In my experience, when you look at C-reactive protein levels, I typically like those levels to be under three to begin with, even under one if we can get there. And if your doctor isn't already testing your C-reactive protein level, and if you're someone that has uh, inflammation, sometimes you don't even know that you have a high C-reactive protein level, myself included. I used to be running under one milligram per liter. Now I'm up around five or six, and I won't get into that reason. I think a lot of it has to do with this virus, again, that's floating around, causing a lot of inflammation in a lot of different patients. But at the end of the day, if you're somebody that's suffering with pain and inflammation, First off, go out and get your level checked. Either my marker that I like to look at or suggest is C-reactive protein and see if that level is high. And then obviously work with your doctor, your healthcare provider on mechanisms on lowering that. And quercetin, again, may not be my first choice. I might look at uh, curcumin or Teriva to start with, but Quercetin might be one of those products you want to add to your supplement regimen, again, depending on what you and your doctor decide. The second health topic that I want to look at with you is prostitis. So this, again, was a smaller study. It was 30 men. They took randomized to receive either placebo or quercetin, and this was 500 milligrams twice a day for 30 days. Those taking the quercetin had three times... Uh, more likely to see symptom improvement compared to those that were in the placebo group. Of the 11 participants that did not respond to treatment, what was interesting is they took that small subset of non-responders and looked at their genotype. And what they found was that these patients were, were low producers of another inflammatory marker called TNF-alpha. So it was interesting to see that the researchers in the study went, again, a step further in helping to figure out the reasons why these patients weren't responding. So as medicine uh, progresses, what I think we're going to see is individualized medicine in that we're going to start taking these patients that are non-responders and looking at their genotypes, seeing what SNPs or mutations they have, uh, you know, in their DNA and tailoring therapy based on what their, what their genetics are telling us. Another health condition that I have come up against that's hard to treat in the pharmacy world is interstitial cystitis. I, in my opinion, in my experience, I haven't seen a lot of great treatment uh, protocols out there for IC. Uh, with quercetin, the the evidence isn't great either, unfortunately, uh, but it is something worth considering. Uh, there was one study, again, I'll show this on the screen here, that looked at um, 22 patients f given 500 milligrams of quercetin twice a day for four weeks uh, that had 
again, I'll say significant improvement over placebo, but again, this study had a lot of limitations I won't get into. And it was a smaller stu study of only 22 patients. And so if you're somebody out there suffering with interstitial cystitis, quercetin possibly can help. Um, there's also some other factors involved too that um, you may want to consider. There's chondroitin sulfate and sodium uh, hyaluronate that might be helpful in your situation as well. So I encourage you to, to again, look at those with your provider. The next health condition I want to look at with quercetin is osteoarthritis. So there was a small study that looked at 46 patients that were given quercetin at 500 milligrams for three months. Uh, something to be aware of in this study, though, these patients were given also glucosamine and chondroitin. So that's something to be aware of. So we don't want to, again, extrapolate too far that these improvements were just seen with quercetin. But 46 patients, 500 milligrams of quercetin, and it did show, again, significant improvement over placebo in their daily activities, in their ability for walking without pain. And they also looked at synovial fluid integrity and the uh, protein structure and the hyaluronic acid that was in that synovial fluid improved. And so that is an important takeaway. But in my opinion, I think part of that is also to do with the glucosamine and, and chondroitin that, that those patients were given. Uh, an interesting note, there was a subsection in this study of patients that had rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, and when those patients were given the uh, same concoction of the quercetin, glucosamine, and chondroitin, those patients did not see a, a significant, uh, clinically significant improvement over placebo. So osteoarthritis, responders to quercetin and the combo product, but with RA or rheumatoid arthritis, that benefit was not seen. There are mixed results with quercetin and its benefit on metabolic syndrome. So patients with elevated cholesterol levels, blood pressure, uh, blood sugars, uh, being overweight, etc. There's a study that looked at supplementation ranging from 50 to 150 milligrams of quercetin. And this was only given for two weeks. So I certainly a limitation to this study that I'm referencing and didn't show any changes in lipid levels in those study participants. There was another study done that looked at overweight and obese patients taking 150 milligrams a day that saw a slight decrease in their systolic blood pressure. However, those patients um, had a decrease in their HDL, uh, which uh, depends on what camp you're on with this, but HDL typically is seen as the, the good cholesterol. And so, yes, their blood pressure lowered because of the quercetin supplementation, uh, but their good or their HDL cholesterol went down as well. So something to weigh out, you know, again, pros and cons with quercetin, um, adding that to your supplement regimen. Quercetin has been shown in animal models to benefit uh, anxiety and depression, uh, however, that benefit hasn't transferred over to human clinical studies. So what I use quercetin, you know, first line recommendation for an anxiolytic or antidepressant, I, was certain, I wouldn't in my opinion. Uh, but again, if there's somebody there that's struggling that might have some other comorbidities or other health concerns that might benefit from, from quercetin, um, it may not be a bad idea to give it a try, but again, I'm, results may not be that favorable. The last health condition I want to look at is sleep. So quercetin wouldn't be my first option or recommendation if somebody's suffering with insomnia. Uh, but again, there was a study, I will put this up on the screen here briefly, that looked at this quercetin extract, lemon verbena, if I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. Uh, but it was a a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. Again, small, small study size, but it did show promising results. And my takeaway from this study was, again, I wouldn't use it first line, but if somebody is, again, has some allergies, some other issues that might benefit more so from quercetin, it might not be a bad idea to try dosing the quercetin at night if that patient's also having difficulty sleeping as well. So there are a few drug interactions to be aware of when it comes to 
supplementing with quercetin. So just so I get this exactly right, quercetin can inhibit the following enzymes. Your CYP3A4, which is a very common enzyme, by the way, uh, for drug metabolism. CYP1A2, so it inhibits that as well. It can increase the activity of CYP2A6 and acetyltransferase and xanthine oxidase activity. It can also inhibit P-glycoprotein, which is a transporter that controls drug elimination from the body. Why do I mention all of this as a pharmacist? I am certainly concerned with a lot of patients that are coming into the store that are on a lot of these pharmaceuticals looking to transition off of them. And I want you to work with your physician, your pharmacist, and doing this responsibly in a smart fashion so that we don't run into any problems. If you do decide uh, to supplement with quercetin, always check with your doctor and your healthcare provider first. That's extremely important. Side effects with quercetin, there's only a few that I could find in the literature. It is very well tolerated, but just real quick, uh, it is reported that sometimes quercetin can give patients uh, headaches. So that's one thing to be aware of. And secondly, it can also cause a tingling sensation in the extremities. Again, I did find both of those side effects to be very um, uh, not reported essentially much at all. So just to be aware of that. I hope you found value in today's content. As always, I encourage you to share this information with a loved one and please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and we're really trying to get, again, quality health information out to those that need it. I feel in the pharmaceutical world, we tend to be uh, misinformed on the, the benefits of the pharmaceuticals without giving the proper information on the risks, risks that might be imposed by those medications. Again, not that I'm against them, but I always want patients to be informed of what they're coming up against if they do decide to take a pharmaceutical. Have a great day, and we'll see you for the next video.